to irrational. Most things are rational, but you got these strange ones over here. So let's talk about rational numbers, and that's really what the point of this whole unit is, is rational numbers. This involves all fractions. Mixed fraction, improper fraction, proper fraction, all fractions are called rational. It also includes decimals, but specific decimals. Anyone remember this from last year? Decimals that we call terminate, so they stop, like 2.5, 3.16, so terminating decimals. And then there's a whole bunch of other decimals that we call repeating. So we call this terminating and repeating decimals. So all fractions, all terminating and repeating decimals. And then there's a third group of numbers that fall under the rationals, and that's what's called perfect roots. So last year, we would have just told you perfect square roots. So numbers like root of 16, because root of 16 is equal to 4, and root of 25, because that's equal to 5. But now we're going to add in the perfect cube roots, and the perfect fourth roots, and the perfect fifth roots, et cetera, et cetera. Give me an example of a perfect cube root. 27, because we talked yesterday, what's the cube root of 27? 3. Give me a perfect fourth root. 81, because the, the fourth root of 81 is four, 3. Yes, you're very right, it's 3. So I'm going to call this perfect roots. Last year we would have called it perfect square roots, but now you understand that there's more than just square roots, there's cube roots and fourth roots. All of those make up the rational. So that's aunts and uncles and extended cousins and everybody else. Now we can't call it R, because R is the real numbers. Yeah, pick something that makes absolutely no sense. Q. It's Q. Then over here, which is a family all by itself, but still part of the real, so that's your crazy side that no one talks to in the family. They're called irrational numbers, and irrational numbers freak out mathematicians. We don't know why they exist. We don't know what they mean yet. There are mathematicians that their sole job every single day is to determine why do we have irrational numbers. Are there infinite number of irrational numbers? What if that's the key to, causing, to curing cancer? What if that's the key to the universe is irrational numbers? We don't know. They freak us out. Two different kinds fall into that family. We call them non-terminating, non-repeating decimals. Repeating. Give me an example of the most famous non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. Pi. Pi is irrational. We can't explain it. It freaks us out. There's another one you'll meet in grade 12 that's called E. That's it, just E. That's its name. It's another irrational number. The second part that falls in kind of comes from here. So this was our terminating, repeating. This is our non-terminating, repeating. This is our perfect roots. This is our non-perfect roots. Well, that's what we spent yesterday estimating. So an example of a non-perfect root would be square root of 40. Cube root of, give me an example of a non-perfect cube root. 20, great example. The fourth root of? 12, great example. All of these families come together and they all make up the real numbers. Do you kind of remember this from last year? Kind of? No? Surprise, number families. That's very right-brained. I'll do left brain now, so if you like the bulls, use the bulls. If you don't like the bulls. Oh, oh, I forgot the, oh, I forgot the letter. Bah, thank you. <laughs> You're going to love this one. So there's a symbol in math that means not. So you can have an even number, you can have a not even number. You can have a square root, you can have not a square root. You can have a rational and a not rational. And what's another word for not rational? Irrational. So this is Q, and the symbol for not is prime. Now, it's not an apostrophe. I'm going to write it bigger. It's like a little slash. So it's not this guy here that's an apostrophe. It's called a prime. 
Prime means not in math, so the symbol is literally not rational. Not prime. And in the middle, I'm going to put a circle around it. This is the most common way you see number families. Circle around that and the W. Circle around that and give me the letter I. Circle around that is the Q. Circle off by itself. Q prime, which means not. And a circle around the whole thing. R. That's the traditional way of seeing number families. I want you to turn and talk with a partner for each of these circles. I want you to write down the name of the family and write down two examples of any number that's in that family. Write down the name of each family and two examples of any numbers that the, that's in that family. Completely up to you. Now, when we ask what number set does a family belong to, we're not looking for the reals, because we know in your world every number is real. We want to know either what's the highest bowl or what's the innermost circle. So if we take a number like 15, for, for example, is it a real number? Yes. Is it irrational or rational? It's rational, so we can keep going. Is it an integer? Is it a whole number? Is it a natural? So the answer we're looking for is natural because that's the highest bull we could go up to. If we do it in terms of the circle, we start on the outside. Is it real? Yes. Is it, is it rational? Yes. Is it an integer? Yes. Is it a whole? Yes. Is it a natural? Yes. The family it belongs to is the natural. So although you have this great extended family and they all have different last names, if I were to say what family do you belong to, I want to know what's your last name. So what's the highest family we can go up to? Negative 14. Is it a real number? Yes, everything is. Then you're asking yourself, is it rational or irrational? If the answer is irrational, then you're done. You stop. Is it rational or irrational? Negative 14. Okay. Well, you can think of that in terms of a fraction, because 14 is a fraction. It's 14 over what? 1. Or you can think of it in terms of a decimal. 14 is 14 point. Zero. So is it a terminating decimal? Yes. Is it a fraction? Yes. So negative 14 is rational. Is it an integer? Yes. Is it a whole number? Why is it not a whole number? Because it's negative. So what's the family it belongs to? I. Do you understand how to answer those questions? Okay, again, if you want to do it with the circles, we start rational. Yes. Q. Yes. I. Yes. That's where we can stop because it's not part of the holes. Root 2. Real number, yes, because everything's a real number. Rational or irrational? Well, because it's a root, now you're going into these two categories. Is that a perfect root or is it a non-perfect root? Can we take the square root of 2 and get a whole number as an answer? So what does that tell you about the family? It's irrational, and we can't use i because i is integer, so we use q prime. And what does prime mean? Not means not rational. Negative three quarters. Real, rational, integer. Okay, I heard yes and no. Well, it's got the negative, but can you have fractions up here? So what's its family? And what's the symbol? Q. Does that make sense how to do those questions? Okay, so again, we know they're all real numbers. We're going up in the bowls or in with the circles until we run out of numbers. That's classifying numbers. That's what it needs you to do is just put numbers into families. Second thing we're going to do today is called ordering numbers. And again, you did this last year. We're just adding in cube roots. Quick little review. What does ascending mean? What does descending mean? Somebody gets it wrong every year in the exam. Ascending, going up. I like that. Another brain, give me a different way you might interpret ascending. Elevation. Ooh, elevated, I like that. Another brain that thought of something else. Lowest to greatest. Can I do lowest to highest? And then least to greatest? Ooh, 
Oh, you can't see that. Least to greatest. Anybody else? Any other brain come up with something different? Descending, don't say the opposite. Decreasing, ooh, I like that word. Descending, well, that's kind of the same word, but yes. Okay, different brain, give me another way you look at it. Going down. Big two. Small is another way. Small with two L's. Right brain people sometimes just like the arrow pointing down because you think in symbols instead of words. Here's the same questions you would have done last year. It's just now we're adding cube roots and fourth roots and all these great numbers in there. Put the following groups of numbers in the order as stated. So A, we're going to do descending order. We've got negative 9 and 11, root of 4, cube root of 10, negative 0 0.9, 2 fifths, negative 0.99. Hint number one. Same hint we would have told you last year. Anybody remember? If you were to do this question, what's the first thing you'd want to do? Probably grab your calculator and what would you want to calculate? Okay, grab your calculators. What's your natural instinct? Turn them all to the same thing, and what are you probably going to want to turn them into? Mm, you can't, because a fraction won't be a whole number. Decimals. So convert them all to decimals. Our brain thinks in decimals. If I say to you, how many like fractions over decimals? Maybe one hand is going to go up. How many people like decimals over fractions? Why? Why do our brains like decimals? Because it's money. It's what we're used to seeing all the time. We go out to a store, you're always going to see decimal something something. So that's the furthest convert to decimals. A uh, couple other hints. It's just when you look at multi-decimal places. So negative 0.22, for example and negative 0.2. Which one's bigger and which one's smaller? We're assuming if it stops there, that it stops. So it would be a zero, but it's not necessary. So I heard both answers. That's why I'm still staring at you. You've got to fight it out. OK, so it, when it's positive, our brain works that way. It's easy to know 0.2 is less than 0.22, correct? It's always the negative that screw people up. So Andrew, I want you to say that again, because it was a really good statement. you're going further towards the negative side. So negative 0 0.22 is less than negative 0.2. If you don't like the symbol, write the words. Write smaller than, write whatever you want. If you're a number line person, I'm going to put 0 way over there on the right-hand side. And I'm going to put 1, or negative 1, I should say way over there on the right-hand side, left-hand side. I'm all backwards today. And so if I put negative 0.2 there and negative 0.3, and I'm not spacing them out to do anything in particular, negative 0.2 is there. Where is negative 0.22? To the left or to the right? It's to the left. That's why it's smaller, because it's further to the left. What if I turn them positive? OK, so what symbol needs to go in there? Greater than. If you don't like the symbol, write the word.
Another example that tends to mix people up, if we look at the difference between 0.3 repeating and 0.33. No repeating, just 3-3 three, three ending, terminating. Which one? Oh, okay. Okay, so does it need to be bigger in here? Okay, so if you're not sure, let's draw a number line. This time I'm going to put zero on the left because I want to go to the positive side. Okay, so about a third of the way is going to be 0.3. So tell me, where is 0.33? To the left of that or the right of that? Just to the right of it. Well, then where is 0 0.033333333 to infinity? Just to the right of that guy. So there's your negative 0.3 repeating. So 0.3 repeating is greater than 0.33. What if I make them negative? Okay, so you're basically reversing them, you're doing mirror imagery, you're thinking which one is more towards the left. So what symbol needs to go there? Less than. You're very quiet, I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means you don't understand, you don't care, you're, you got it. Okay, I'm going to grab some paper because I don't want to smush that in there. So first step, we're going to convert them all to decimals so that we can compare them. So negative 9 divided by 11, and the decimals are going to be important. So don't just cut it off in your head. We need to actually get all the decimal places. So negative 9 divided by 11. Give me the decimal. Don't everybody shout at once. So could we call that 0.81 repeating? Oh, no, but that's your calculator rounding it off. Can we confirm that? Nobody wants to confirm that. We're good. OK, root of 4. OK, well, don't put that into your calculator. It's a perfect square root. Now, if you want to add 0, 0.0, because that makes sense in your head, then do it. If you can see that it's 0, 0.0, then don't worry about it. Okay, so completely up to you if you need that 0, 0.0 to be able to compare decimals. Cube root of 10, where do you find a cube root on your calculator? Go into the math menu. And what number are you going to pick? It's going to be a long class if we just stare at each other. Even? OK, I want, I want all the decimals. Confirm? OK. Negative 0.9, I've actually had people put negative 0.9 into their calculator. Could we use some logic? Do we need to put that into our calculator? No, because we're just comparing decimals. Two-fifths. Off of 0 0.2 with a question mark. 0 0.4, even. Confirmed. And negative 0 0.99, negative 0 0.99. 
Are we going increasing or decreasing? What did the question ask for? Descending. Okay, so I'm going to put the arrows to represent. What's the biggest decimal that's here? Point. Okay, so we've used that one. What's the next one? I'm just writing down what you guys are saying, by the way. Are you happy with the order? I'm not telling you if you're right and wrong. It's up to you guys. Okay. Now we're just going to go back and restate it in terms of what the question gave us. So what did we convert to get 2.15 dot dot dot? The cube root of 10 is our biggest one, followed by, followed by, followed by, followed by, and the last one, high five by favorite piece. Again, nothing new than what you did last year. The only thing is we didn't give you the cube roots and we didn't give you stuff like 0.9 and 0.99. How we feel it. Okay, let's do one more together and then you'll try one on your own. Cube root of negative 6. Wait, I thought you couldn't take the root of negative numbers. Calculator can. Well, why can the calculator? Is the calculator wrong? So what? What? WTH? What the heck? You told me we can't do roots of negative numbers. You told me this in unit two. Well, that's only for square roots. Because can you get a negative times a negative and come out with a negative? No. But cube roots is okay because can you do a negative times a negative times a negative and come out to be negative? Yes, so it's only for even roots, we call it. Can't do square roots of negatives, can't do fourth roots of negatives, can't do six roots, the evens are fine. So put it in your calc, give me all the decimal places. Give me lots. Do you think that's rational or irrational, by the way? It is irrational because that is a non-perfect cube root. Okay, next one is negative 14 on 13. Oh, I want them all. Confirm? 1.2. Now be careful that you're reading the question carefully because you might think this is 1 and then the next number is 11 on 50. How do we know this is one number, 1 and 11 on 50? There's no comma. So 1 and 11 on 50. Two. Even. 22. Then it stops. Okay. 
And the last one, 1 1.22 dot, dot, dot. What does that dot, dot, dot mean? Yeah, so you can write it as 1.2 repeating. You can write it as 2, 2, 2, 2 if your brain needs to see those. Whatever you choose. What we're trying to do is compare these last guys here. Ascending or descending? Okay, so again, I'm going to put the arrow because right brains like to see it. Find the smallest number. I've heard two offers now. Okay, so let's just go right away and give what the question gave. So rather than writing it down again, let's give our negative, uh, negative six, the cube root of negative six. Oh, would you like to change something? What would you like to change? Where would you like to put it? Here? Yeah, I know, but they didn't. They just let you go. Where would you like? Here? I know, I'm waiting for someone to fix it. Where would you like to put it? Oop, one. Are you sure? Okay, example number C, letter C. Um, together, by yourself, with a friend, what do you feel like? Okay, go to. Uh, when we're done the example? Okay, one or the other. Um, negative three-fifths, somebody have the decimal for me? Confirm? Yeah. Cube root of nine? Uh, Confirm? Yeah. Cube root of, or square root of six? Uh, One third? So Negative two squared? Four ninths. One point two five. And negative one point four four. Increasing or decreasing? Okay, find the smallest number. Yeah, the actual thing.
Uh, yeah, top, bottom, doesn't matter. Okay, so we've done this one, we've done this one, we've done this one. Good catch. Square root of six. High five, Nikita. We carried that one. Confirm, agree. What are the two skills you need to be able to do after today? Classifying numbers and ordering numbers. Questions, anything you're not sure of? Homer's on the calendar. If you don't want to start now, I'm okay with that. Yes, sir.